Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and the second episode of Farming for a Mageblood. There's tons to cover and I don't want to make this video too long, but there's been patch notes that drop overnight that are basically going to totally shift the economy. It's essentially broken the farming strategy that people are using to print insane items and currency. So everything in the economy should start to normalize. And it's very evident if we look at Mage Blood. It was 120 divines yesterday. It's now 220 divines, and it's likely to keep rising. That's good for me. It means this, this series can go on a little bit longer than expected. It also means things that people were using specifically for that strategy are probably going to tank in price. So if you were sitting on those divination scarabs that were 40 divines, I doubt they are anymore. Um, I was an idiot and was sitting on these all flames of rogue exiles. And this is specifically what got nerfed to stop the strategy. These were 1.8 divines yesterday. They're now 20 C. I've only got two or three, so not the end of the world, but should have sold them before I went to bed yesterday. So overall, what I'm looking to do is a strategy that is kind of unaffected by the economy shift that's going to happen. You notice in the bottom here, I've got a timer at 4.30. When I left off, I was at two and a half hours. The reason is I'd started farming a strategy not aimed at the materials for this farm, but doing something where I could abuse the fact that they were dropping tons of scarabs so I could get some good ones for cheap. And now I don't know that's going to be the case. So I've abandoned this strategy, stopped at 4.30. I've got around 71 divines worth of loot in my stash. That's if I sold everything. So let's say this is 55 divines um, in four and a half hours and the rest I'll just put in my stash. We're making okay progress. What we're going to do for this strategy is a Grimrow strategy. What I mentioned at the last video was that I wanted to do something that boosted altars, pack size, drop more corpses, drop more all flames. I designed a strategy that I wasn't quite happy with, so I wanted to optimize. Then randomly in my YouTube feed, I got recommended a Grimro video, and it was pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. He explains it very, very well. He's got results, how much you get for each item. So I'll link that video, recommend 100% following it if you want to do what I'm doing. I am slightly modifying the strategy, but only to suit myself i think profit wise follow grim's video so what it does is essentially it's taking nearly all of the macropolis nodes that add extra modifier effects extra modifier chances extra corpses extra all flames anything to juice that strategy we'll go into why that's important in a moment when we visit the patch notes for the patch that dropped overnight and then it's also taking as many increased explicit modifiers as possible which means the maps are going to be hard and then we're going to take some scarab nodes we take shrines because this spawns natural inhabitant monsters of the map. So you've got more chance of corpses, more chance of all flames, and more chance of rewards from all flames if you use them in the maps. And then we're just taking some map nodes and then all of the X art nodes because I never run eater altars. That's kind of it. It's a simple strategy. And we're basically going to do this on Mausoleum. You can either do it on Mausoleum or Jungle Valley because the bosses can't spawn the altars on those maps. So you're always going to get the minion option on your altars. I prefer Mausoleum personally. I hate Jungle Valley with Vol Lightning Strike because the trees block all of the attacks. But it's up to you what map you run. And then we're going to take Singular Focus to make sure we only drop Mausoleum. In terms of Scarabs, this strategy is more expensive than the last one because we are using Scarabs. And these Scarabs are likely to go up in price because they're not going to be dropping in volumes that they were dropping before. So if these prices get too much, don't do it. Just drop the Scarabs and run them without. So I'm running... A cartography scab of corruption. These were about 5C when I bought them yesterday. I think even if they're 10C, they're well worth it because you're going to get corrupted 8 mod maps drop and these drop a ton more loot than normal maps. If they get up to the point they're 20, 25C, honestly, I'd still consider it because of the loot you get out of these maps, but that's when it kind of becomes borderline. We're running influence monsters have increased pack size. This is purely to boost up the Exarch altars. We're running additional shrines along with shrines on the map device. If these become 5, 6 C each, just run it on the map device, forget this scarab. And then we're also running scarab of monstrous lineage, which gives magic pack size 40% increased size. Again, if these get too expensive, I'd consider not running them. This strategy will work fine without any scarabs, but you will drop more loot and the maps will be more fun with all these scarabs in. So that's kind of it. We're just running map after map after map. Mausoleum is a figure of eight. We'll go and do a showcase in a moment anyway. So I'm not going to track per hour per map or anything like that because this is a strategy that someone else has already created and they've already done how much currency you can earn if you've got a decent character. Um, so we're just going to keep a track of net worth. The main reason I'm doing that is 
a lot of this stuff I've got that I haven't sold yet, I'll probably do a selling session next video, is likely to change in price because of this economy shift. So it might be that by the end of two hours, I've suddenly sitting on 120 div. But that's not because I've farmed 50 div. That's probably because loads of stuff I've got has gone up in value because it's not getting spat out by a broken farming strategy. So before we just jump into a showcase, let me just go through the patch notes. The change that's affected the farming strategy that people were doing is the All Flame of Ember of Anarchy, which puts lots of rogue exiles into your map, just puts one rogue exile per pack, which basically means that the strategy no longer spits out thousands of rogue exiles. It might be 30 to 40. And you've noticed that because the All Flame has gone from 1.7 div to 20 C. So that's what's going to basically cause the economy to shift and why Mage Bloods have doubled in price overnight. There are some positives for our strategy though. And if we go to bulk and we'll look at the first ones. So they've added All Flames and Coffins above 80 to the bulk exchange and it works perfectly. I've tried it out. If we wanted to go uh, modifier tier rating, for example, and we wanted to buy eight of them for Chaos, you could just put in eight. And then it'll bring up all of these here for 5C and you can just whisper one person, buy them all. It's going to make crafting items much, much easier, but selling even easier. And for someone like me who's already sitting on about four to five divines worth of corpses, this is a massive, massive change and a big, big boost to income. They've added T17s to bulk exchange. You won't drop a ton of them, but you should drop enough to be able to sell them in bulk. And then this doesn't really matter for us, but they've added a maximum to the count so that you, do, you can block people that are only selling like 200 of the same item. Now, there are also more changes, which should increase the profit even more. And that is that they fixed a bug where Shaper, Elder and Conqueror Influence Gravecrafts couldn't be obtained. So when the cropple is dropped, they did go on about how you can craft influence items and no one has ever seen one of these, which meant they were definitely bugged and not in the game. Now they are, which means it opens up more crafting options. You can craft influence items. Whether you can craft double influence, I don't know. You might still need an awaken rule for that. But it does mean it opens up options for more specific crafts and certainly more expensive crafts. And these are probably going to be rare. So again, we're boosting up rarity of corpses so we can sell these as well. And if needed, we can sell them in bulk. They're the changes that make a difference. There are other changes like T17 maps we made easier. They've changed some of the modifiers and how they work and how they appear, but none of it really affects the strategy too much. It's just those ones that make a difference. So we'll jump in, we'll do a map showcase, usual, have some highlights, and then we'll look at the stash at the end. Just go over how the strategy felt. But again, warning, this is more difficult than the last strategy. Maps can get hectic and you might die. So let's go and do a map showcase. One thing I would warn you is, because we're running eight mod maps, if you have a character that cannot do three or four different map mods, Maybe don't do the 8 mod Corrupted because you might end up only being able to run 2 out of 10 of your maps. I can run everything, but obviously some are much more dangerous and deadly than others. Um, so we're going to put Domination on the map device. We're going to go Searing Exarch. We've got our Exarch Juice Atlas Tree. And then we've got our 4 Scarabs here along with our 8 mod map. So we're going to go in. And then again, you're going to put the more difficult mods towards the top. If we had Harbies on the tree, that would be great, but we don't. Um, and then something like increased movement speed is fine. It just means monsters get to me quicker. Um, so we'll run it like this. We're not going to do any all flames or anything for this. You could because this magic pack can be upgraded, but I like to wait until we get like more pack size. And let's say these are much more deadly, but they are insanely fun. And we've got, <laughs> we've got no life recovery from Flas, which is uh, interesting. Um, so we'll start taking some corpses, but now you can literally collect every corpse because I'm sure every corpse has some sort of use. I probably need to do a slightly stricter loot filter, but... I shouldn't really be hanging around to kill these, but... Got gem cutter prisms, nice reward. Now those I'm not going to take because I really don't think they are ever going to be worthwhile. Because they'll take up too many grave slots to be good. Uh, one Ancient Shard, yeah, not worth killing that Harbour, was it? There's something under here, so we're going to have to collect it anyway. Don't want that because that bricks my adrenaline. <laughs> That's one thing to look out for if you're running the same build. When you get the massive shrine, just make sure it's not uh, bricking your adrenaline. If it is, I tend to just turn it off, which you can right-click on the buff to turn it off. So not particularly juicy so far this one, but we're getting some loot. I 
Lesser embers I'm still picking up. I need to recheck the economy. Yesterday they were over a chaos each, which is pretty nuts considering how many you drop. Um, but it is a lot of clicking compared to the last strategy. I keep using my life last even I know it's not going to do anything. P17 map, nice. So you can see, ton of loot, pretty dangerous, but our defenses are not too bad. Um, Degens is really the only thing I'm worried about. Again, you wouldn't normally clear these harpies. You won't get them in many maps anyway. It's quite a rare mod. Oh, they're still here. Okay, I'm going to try and ignore these ones. Because really don't want to fight them. So we'll go and pick up all this loot. And then we'll be on our way. This is taking a little bit longer than normal, mainly because the Harbingers have slowed me down, but we're almost there. So we just do our figure of eight. And then we'll price check these embers when we're at the map, because if they're not worth 1c, they're getting removed from the loot filter. So we'll just kill this last pack just in case it drops a fracture in all. <laughs> surprise, surprise, it didn't. Okay, I think we're about done. We have got more than 50 months still in the map, apparently. Which is odd, since I'm pretty sure I've cleared it all. Oh no, we've still got a tiny bit of the map left. Um, collect more, collect more. <laughs> so as you can see, ton of corpses from this map. And this wasn't even a particularly good one, so we'll get out of here. Just have a quick look at the loot we've picked up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven corpses, I would say. No, it's probably about on the on the average side. Um, but we have been collecting an absolute ton. So we're going to make a lot of currency selling these. Got a few scarabs. We got quite a few of these lesser Eldritch Embers. Let's just check. They are still pretty decent. They are still over a Chaos each. So I think they're well worth picking up. Uh, one click for one Chaos works absolutely fine for me. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but yeah, it works good for me. So we'll just dump all this loot. And then we'll just change this since I totally forgot to start the timer. So we'll just change that to, let's add four minutes on for that map. So it's fine. There we go. And then I'll remember to start the timer. Then I'll be back with you in a bit with some highlights and an overview of what the stash looks like. So I've decided since corpses can now be bought and sold in bolt nice and easy, I might as well use the ones I've collected. I've filled a whole quad tab. I've had to buy two extra fractures, everything else I already had. And we're going for a bit of a gamble craft. We're trying to get plus one frenzy on gloves. 
If you want to know how to do this, I recommend just going to PoE DB and looking at the haunted mods that roll. And the idea is that any that you can reduce, you do, which is why I've got reduced chaos. I'd normally want chaos resistance on gloves, but there's lots of poison uh, haunted mods and I want to try and lower them. Same with caster, there's a few caster mods. It's fairly unlikely to hit the craft and even more unlikely to fracture, but I like to gamble every now and again, so that's what we're doing. So this is what it looks like in game. I may have messed this up because it's got a bit complicated. Um, the reason for reducing fire and cold is that I want to reduce the attacks on the prefixes. If I just do attack, I can't get attack speed and I want attack speed on the gloves. Ideally, what we're looking for is crit multi, which is a haunted mod, attack speed, lightning resistance, which is the resistance that's going to roll predominantly because we're getting rid of cold and fire, life, lightning damage, and plus one frenzy would be amazing. If we can get that, awesome. Very unlikely, but we're going to give it a go. We're probably going to end up with a pair of junk gloves with two rubbish fractures that we end up selling to a vendor. So it's usual 30% quality, two explicits because I want a six mod item. We boosted the haunted chances up quite a bit. Got the modifier rating up so it can only roll the lowest um, or top 10%. I've put the item level to 84, I think, because that's where T1 resistances roll. So if we go armor evasion gloves, just want to double check it's 84. It is. Now, this seems to roll naturally, even though all of my crafts are 83 for the majority, a couple at 82, it still does 84 items. So this could just be the biggest waste of time ever. I'm also probably going to dump this timer because I'm spending so much time like selling and doing haunted crafts and stuff. I don't think it really has any benefit doing this timer. So we are going to scrap it from here on in. Why am I nervous to do this craft? I think because all the others were fairly likely to hit. This one isn't, but if it hits, it's going to be huge. Um, I'm not even going to check that I've done this correctly. I'm just going to assume I have because I've put so many mods on it. Um, so we're going to go armor. Have I missed anything blatantly obvious? We're re-rolling the explicit modifiers. We are putting it up to six with quality in it. We have got our attributes up and we think we've got everything else sorted. So let's give this a go. Armor and evasion, dragon scale gauntlets. Let's go. May the grace of Prospero relieve you of your anguish and aid this soldier. Come on, you can do it. You know you can do it. Ooh, we hit nice. Um, we fractured. The fractures aren't too bad, to be fair, but we've hit attack speed, life, plus one frenzy, lightning resistance. Life per enemy killed and fire damage to attack. So actually, I couldn't have expected much better than that. I'm 100% sure these are going to be way better than the gloves I've got. The only issue I have now is my chaos resistance, if I want to fit this into the build, is going to drop down and I'm going to have to replace it. So we could sell these items. I think they would, this, this pair of gloves would go for a decent amount. Let's double check. Um, so we got life, attack speed, plus one frenzy, armor evasion, Ten divines, there is. A, I thought it might be a little bit more than that, but yeah, ten divines. It looks like for these sort of gloves. I think you will find a few of these on the market because what people are looking for is something like fracturing, crit multi, and plus one frenzy, and then that's a big ticket item. Um, there's probably quite a few of these with what you'd say they're not misfractured because you fractured the frenzy charge, but they could be. In fact, I'd rather sell and buy this pair of gloves because they've got cast resistance on it, so we could do that. Um, but yeah, we've got a pair of gloves that's probably sitting on. I would think maybe seven to eight divines this pair may not even be available this looks way too good um for 10 divines so this may not even be for sale but we can put these gloves up for sale see if they sell if not i'm pretty sure we can work them into the build so we're now five and a half hours in i've just leveled up to 98 so i can start tackling the really horrible eight mod maps that i left behind which are like uh, minus max res fizzes extra reduced effect of non curse or things like that i've kind of left them because I do think I'm going to die in those maps. So a level 98 is going to take me forever to level up anyway. So I'm happy to stop there. I've put the gloves up for sale. I realized I'd have to redo the implicits, which is sort of six to 10 divines, depending on how unlucky I get. And um, so I'll just keep the gloves that I've got. I've put them for sale for eight divines. We'll see what happens. I've started selling some stuff as I've been going along. So we've got a nice amount of divine orbs, 49 and some chaos. I've decided to keep the time again for mapping only. So what this time is going to be at the end of the project is what my mapping time was. That obviously includes in between maps when we're stashing loot. But I'm pausing it when I do my crafts because I'm sometimes going to make tutorial videos off the back of these. And if I'm just offline and I'm selling stuff here and there, I won't have the timer running, obviously. But if I'm selling while I'm mapping, the timer's running. And obviously when I'm mapping, downtime, prepping, buying supplies, the timer's going to be running. Um, so I would take this 90 div with a pinch of salt. I've got seven and a half divs worth of corpses. Realistically, even though you could sell them in bulk, I'm probably selling 25 to 30% of them. Same with the scarabs and the same with the maps. I mean, the maps we could bulk sell pretty easily, to be fair, but 
I'm going to take 25% of all of these values, which removes about 10 divines. Um, so overall, I would think this is probably nearer 70 to 80 divines um, at the moment in five and a half hours, which is very, very nice. And the Gravecraft sales are definitely helping. I'm really enjoying this current strategy. I'm going to do this for quite a bit longer. It's so much fun if your character can handle it. And at the moment, the red XR orbs are selling really well. The invitation's creeping up in price. So I'm definitely going to keep doing this. The profit is really, really good. It's really, really fun. I have run out of supplies, so my stash is going to take a dent again because I need to rebuy scarabs. So I'm maybe going to buy a couple of divines worth of scarabs so that I've got maybe 50 to 60 maps worth to just keep running and keep going. Uh, that's it with the update. There'll be a few more highlights and then we'll wrap up the video whenever I decide to stop this strategy. So I'm about done for this episode. I really do enjoy this strategy. So I am tempted to carry on in the next episode, but track it better. This episode has been a bit of a nightmare. Apologies if you've not been able to follow it because I changed strategies halfway through because of the patch notes. Because of the way I got my tabs set up, I can't really track what I had before and what I've got now in terms of uh, value and items. I've not used MapWatch to track how many maps I've done. So it's it's been a nightmare and not really very useful to follow. But luckily, it's a strategy that I'm using of someone else's anyway, and they have fully tracked how it performs and things like that. The only thing I'll say about the strategy is I used Exarch Alters to get all of the embers. I would think Eater Alters would work just as well, if not better, because you can juice up the quantity and rarity and get more general items to drop. I think either of them work really well. I would just go with whatever Alters you like to run. So I'll just bring up Wealthy Exile. And then we'll just refresh. So I'm at 100 divines because I just sold something for two divines. And this is 98 divines here. But that's in value. We've only got 49 raw div and some chaos. So half of our stashes worth of currency are not actually in divines yet. So what I'm going to do before I close out the video is I'm going to go and sell as much as I can. I'm going to give bulk selling corpses a go. See how that goes. And But as I mentioned, I'm expecting this to be more like 85 to 90 because I'm probably not going to sell my red maps. I have got a lot of 8 mod corrupted cemeteries they might sell. Um, ten div worth of coffins we need to get rid of some of them scarabs i've now limited it so that i only pick up ones worth a couple of chaos or more so we should be able to sell the majority of them um so i'm going to go sell loads of stuff i'll come back to you and then we'll look at a more realistic value and then we'll move on to the next episode but say if this is something you want to try i love this strategy it needs a good character check out grimero's video you will definitely have fun doing it so before i do jump off and sell all of the gear i thought i'd go through how i go about actually knowing what to sell and if you're using something like Wealthy Exile, what works really well is you can filter by category. You go to Scarabs and it'll tell you where all your wealth sits. So I can see one Scarab alone here is 1.5 div. I've got seven easy teachings. That's 112C. So I'm probably realistically only going to go down to somewhere like here, sell the Scarabs, and then anything else that we will keep. And then we'll just sell when we get bulk. Any that are really cheap, so these, for example, at 0.7C each, I'm going to sell all of them to vendors and see if we can get lucky and get a big Scarab back. If not not exactly lost a ton of currency and selling those is going to be a ball ache unless you want to sell the whole lot in bulk in which case you lose so much currency probably on the conversion you might as well just sell them to a vendor and try to get lucky same with the corpses i'm just going to go coffin and then we'll see what i've got that's worth the most currency in bulk so we've got caster mods we've got 10 of them they're five c each so we can sell them um, in bulk people might need four or five at a time the issue with some of them is that they're only going to need a few. Like explicit modifiers, they're realistically only going to need two because you can't put more than six mods on an item. But we'll go and see what we can get rid of. Anything else that's left might go towards a future craft. Okay, so we've spent a bit of time selling. I've included it in the time because I, I was actively selling lots of stuff. And I need to get better at selling. I'm terrible at pricing stuff. I'm terrible at dealing with more than one whisper at the same time. Um, so I haven't sold everything, but I've got a good chunk of it done. Corpses I ended up not selling. I sold some that were worth some money, but the whispers are sort of in dribs and drabs, and some of them are only worth like three C each, and someone might only want two. Really can't be bothered. Maybe I can bulk sell them somewhere, or we'll just continue to use them to craft, which I think is the better option. We've still got our gloves to sell. I'm going to keep them at eight divines for now because I think even with a double fracture, they're worth a fair decent chunk of currency. I've managed to sell a lot of the scarabs and convert some of the rubbish ones into better ones through selling with the vendors. But I do still have a lot to sort through and I kind of lost the will to live doing it. So we'll tackle some of this in the next episode. Now that I've changed my loot field to those so that only scarabs worth of chaos on what appear, it should definitely help out with that. And I'm not going to have all these scarabs. I mean, I had some that were worth about 0.2 of a chaos each. So obviously, I'm just vendoring those and I should never have picked them up. So lesson learned, use a stricter loot filter for scarabs. 
we have a ton of eight mod corrupted maps left over so what i'll probably do is get up to eight hours offline do a bit more of this farm see what currency we've got bang on eight hours we'll start the next episode and as i said i'm going to be much more streamlined in terms of being able to tell you exactly what i earned from the strategy what it is per map what it is per hour so i need to have a big sort out of my stashes so i'm able to do that i don't know what i'm going to do yet it might be ultimatum i know it's probably not profitable at all but i really want to give the new scarabs a go and i don't care if some of the strategies don't work the whole point of this series is to test different stuff out for the majority so with the first two we've gone pretty safe first one is a strategy of my own that i knew worked the second one is basically 95 percent grim row five percent me and i knew that would work it's a ton of fun if it was me personally not doing it to try and vary the content i'll probably just do this strategy the whole time to farm the mage blood it is such a fun way of mapping but you'll have to tune into the next episode to see if you do like this sort of content leaving a thumbs up really helps subscribe if you want to see more content thank you very much take care and see you in the next one